what's in the box? Hey folks, welcome to episode two of uh, What's in the Box? A series of board game unboxing videos. Now, as a natural progression from episode one, we're going to go all the way back to 1974, the original iteration of D&D. That was about nine years before I got involved with the game, so as a result, I never got a chance to even see this version of the game until 2013, when Wizards of the Coast and their Infinite Wisdom decided to republish it in the form of this beautiful collector's box set. Now, this is the original D&D medieval fantasy war game. So let's break this sucker open and see what's inside, shall we? Cover thing on the back, which kind of gives you some details about the contents. And but let's actually have a look and see what's in here. So lift the lid. Oh baby. We've got a beautiful box top here with a embossed um, symbol representing the Menser era of D&D. On the flip side, there is a illustrated front cover, protected with a little cardboard insert, but that's uh, kind of a neat little thing. All right, let's have a look. Oh, that's actually a wise idea to cover the components. Now, the dice themselves are in this little uh, rubbery insert thing, so if you want to get them out, the best bet is to probably just pry the whole thing out like this. And you can just tumble them out. So basically, here are the dice. The D8, the D20. There's four D6s in the set, and the D12. Here's the D4. Here's one of the two percentage dice. Here's the other one. A couple of more D6s. They're very nice. It's a quality set of dice, I must say. And then... We've got a personalized note here from Mike Merles, who is the lead designer and for D&D, the 5th edition. So uh, I presume we've got Mike to thank in part for this. And here they are. Wow. So let's just see if we can open these. And then what we've been waiting for here, the actual original OD&D booklets. Now there's a couple of differences. Uh, primarily it's the cover illustrations, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, the actual cardboard, the gauge of the cardboard used is very similar to the original booklets. Now inside, this is literally the original text, the original typeface, and the uh, original illustrations in these books. So this one is Book One, Men and Magic by Gygax and Arneson. Um, the <laughs> illustrations, it's, it's been supposed that were, well a lot of these drawings or literally somebody that Gary just knew down the street and retained to provide some um, art uh, either free of charge at the lowest possible rate. Uh, this was a, a production that was uh, you know, pretty bare bones at the beginning. I'm looking forward to reading a lot of uh, these booklets if only just because uh, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a fan of Gary's uh, writing style. Some people find it a little bit uh, hard going. I, I love it. I think it has a lot of character. Uh, here's book two, Monsters and Treasures, also by Gary and Dave. Same situation, we've got similar illustrations. Um, some of which did make the cut into future uh, TSR products. Then we've got book three, The Underworld and Wilderness Adventures by Gary and Dave. Again, some interesting illustrations here to say the least. Now, uh, the original version of D&D got criticized pretty heavily for being almost incomprehensible, so I'm looking forward to reading these and seeing if that is indeed the case. Here's the front cover for Book 4, Greyhawk, by uh, Gary and Rob Kuntz. And a lot of great detail in here as well. I'm just, I have never really been privy to this edition of D&D, so I'm really curious to see uh, what the big quantum leaps were between this and uh, the editions that followed. So here's uh, Dave Arneson's uh, Blackmore. Of course, uh, 
Greyhawk is one of the earliest campaign settings uh, for D&D, &D, and then we've got Blackmoor, which is uh, even earlier, really. Um, I don't really think that Dave Arneson's contribution to D&D can be overstated. He is a major creative force and deserves a lot of the credit for the earlier, earliest iterations of D&D &D and the game basically coming into shape. So there's Book 5, Blackmore. Here's uh, Book 6, which is Eldritch Wiz Wizardry by Gary Gygax and Brian Bloom. I'm really interested, actually, in having a look at uh, the details here to see if I can incorporate this into uh, my game, or even run it as is. Um, right here we've got Book 7, which is Gods, Demigods, and Heroes. A lot of spells, a lot of references to um, gods and whatnot that would eventually find themselves into um, future D&D &D tomes. And here's some reference sheets, so if you do want to run this thing, it's not just a pretty package. A lot of the reference sheets have been summarized here for easy reference. And finally, we've got an ad for some current products uh, by Wizards of the Coast in the D&D &D line. All right, folks, so what do I think of the original Dungeons & Dragons collector set? Uh, I will say that for the price that I paid for it, I am quite happy with it. I paid about $115, $114 for it. And for the beautiful collector's box, the premium dice inside, most importantly to have access to the those original scarce uh, Holy Grail white pamphlets of D&D &D lore, it's, uh, it's worth it for sure for me. Now I have, I have access to every edition of D&D, &D, which is great. Um, however, this uh, does retail for $172 Canadian and $150 US, which I think is kind of steep for what it is. But uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, with it for the price that I paid. Um, well, hopefully down the road I'll get a chance to review everything that's in this box on my board gaming blog. The address should appear here, hopefully, magically. Uh, and uh, who knows, I might even be able to do an audio podcast of a session inspired by this OD&D set. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, take care, and game on!